Let's go to the Bible. Amen. Amen. Because today we're going to come out of 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter. Starting at verse 1. We're going to go to verse 7. Once you get there, you can stand for the first verse of the apple. You may be seated, but I'm going to continue to read on. 2 Samuel. Now, y'all may hurt me because um, I broke my glasses. much pressure. Hallelujah. Thank God. I'm in the master's hands. Amen. Because too much pressure can break me. Amen. Oh, somebody should shout right Amen. there. Praise God. Don't even know you need it. In 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, verse 1, it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. You may be seated, praise God. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought, bought and nourished up, and they grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock, and of his own herd, to dress for the warfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. My topic today is I'm talking to you. Look at somebody and say, I'm talking <laughs> because so many times we are coming to church and the word of the Lord is going forth and we don't realize that he's talking to us. Amen. Sometimes we'll look at our neighbor or look at the person sitting beside of us and think God is talking to them. But God is talking to you. Tell somebody God is talking to you. God is talking to you. Today, I'm going to share some pearls of wisdom with you. Because the Lord deals in wisdom. He's all you get, get understanding. And with understanding, you got to grow to the next level, which is wisdom. Hallelujah. Because truly, when you understand something, you can impart some wisdom on what you know. See, when I say I'm talking to you, there ain't time to go to sleep. When I'm talking to you, hallelujah, this is what the Lord said. When I'm talking to you, you need to pay attention. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You yeah, have been talking to someone, and then you had to tell them I'm talking to you. Uh -huh. You don't hear me? I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Yeah. That means that they're not paying attention. Exactly. Something must have your attention. Uh -huh. Right right now, it seems like some things got our attention. But we need to be so focused on God. That nothing else can get our attention. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, the smart kids tend to sit at the front of the, uh, 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 of the class. Yes. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because they don't want no distractions. Because when you're in back of the class, you use the class. Mm -hmm. When you're back of the class, you're paying attention to everything else. That's it. And not paying attention to the lesson. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. That's why we was like, sometimes you're in church and be like, I wish so-and-so was here. Anybody ever done that? They needed to hear this lesson. Well, God said, I'm talking to you. There's a deeper level of what I'm talking about to you. Because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, you couldn't get me through the word. Oh. Hallelujah. So I'm going to get me through my sacrifice. Oh. I put the law out there. You wouldn't respect that. So I'm going 
to show you I'm going to have to be the word wrapped in flesh. Oh, he even tell us by your faith you are made whole. I like to say by your words because faith is in God's word. And by God's word we can be made whole. If you can be made whole by his word, why aren't you paying attention? It seems like, hey, wasn't we in the same service? Have you ever not been like that? Yeah, you can relate to me, right? How do you sit in this service with your spouse and be like, did you not hear what the word said? <laughs> Were you not in the same room? You ever been in a conference or a setting where something is being taught and, and people come out there and they got a totally different understanding? You're like, were you in the same place? Was they not talking to you? When I know that you have heard what's been said, you do what's been told. Can I get an amen there? Because you know how long you say, you must have heard me. I was talking to you, you must have heard what I said. And why she would ask you that is because you didn't do what she told you to do. When the word is instructing you, why won't we follow? We can't make that excuse we don't know. Because we have been instructed in the word. That means that we wasn't paying attention when the word was going forward. When the Bible say believe, why don't we believe? When the Bible say you can have healing, why don't we receive healing? When the Bible say you can be delivered, why are we not delivered? Come on. Because we don't think he's talking to us. But he's talking to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. The Lord just shifted all the time. I was outside this morning and, and I was walking around like I normally do the church and, and, and my yard and all that. And I'd be looking for stuff. You know, I'd be just walking, just looking. And as I was out looking, I found something. I found that there's some crabgrass still growing. If anybody know anything about me, I, I, I preach about four or five sermons on crabgrass. Crabgrass is not grass. It is weeds. It's something that looked like grass. Hallelujah, but it will agitate the hell out of you. Oh, if you're into grass, you don't want crabgrass because crabgrass grow faster than regular grass. Oh, come on. You ain't never seen people like that. Hallelujah. You think they have the word, and they seem to be growing, but they ain't growing in the word. They ain't nothing but crabgrass. And so as I was walking around, I began to see the crabgrass. And the thing I learned about crabgrass, you got to cut it off before it's seed. Amen. Somebody better shout right there. Because once you get to those little black little things, then it start releasing. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Now you only got to deal with not only that one, but you got more to deal with. Yes. If you don't learn to cut stuff off, you want to start dealing with his byproducts. Yes. Yes. So when Nathan came to David, he said, David, you have sinned. Because in verse uh, uh, the, uh, the chapter before, he said the law was displeased with David. Yes. So he sent Nathan, right? Right. And Nathan had to deal with David's sin because by dealing with David's sin, he can make him whole. Okay. Right. If you listen to what God is telling you, you can be made whole. Amen. Amen. God don't send his word, hallelujah, just to send his word. Hallelujah, he thinks so high of his word, he watches over it to perform it. Come on. Come on. Somebody should shout right there. Hallelujah. God respects his word so much. He said, heaven and earth shall pass before my word shall fail. Amen. Come on. And we don't want to give no reverence to God's word. Oh, man. It's like we ain't just another said it. And somebody just talking. But if they're talking about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I need to be paying attention. Thank you. You need to be paying attention. Oh, Lord. But nowadays, there's so many distractions. We come in church, and our phone can be a distraction. Hallelujah. We come in church and the person next to us can be a distraction. We come to church and our children can be a distraction. See, we can correct, we can correct some of that stuff. If your children is a distraction, the only thing you take is a belt. Oh, Lord. 
He was like, Pastor, don't talk about spanking. <laughs> You don't need my man. My daddy here about spanking right about now. But that will correct him. Yeah. Oh, come on. The Bible says, spare not the rock. Because if you spare, you're going to spoil the time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Kids are act up. Hallelujah. When you don't want them to act up if you don't train them well. Yeah. Right? So we can correct that. Uh, the phone, we can correct. Because we have the Bible up on the uh, projected. So you get on there. You use your phone as the Bible, then all of a sudden a text come across. Oh, what's that little game that they play all the time? Come on, give me that confession. Farm heroes. Huh? Farm heroes. Fortnite. Huh? Oh, it's just notifications, period. Because the only thing you do is say, I got to notice. And then all day you follow that, and then you get in trouble after you follow. Because the next thing you know, now you think you, it's so important, you got to answer it. Why are you going to answer why God talking? Yeah. I don't mean no harm, but you ever been when you was trying to focus on something and someone was talking to you, and hey, what you told them? Come on, just be real. Hey, shut up. Could you be quiet? Oh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to get this. I've been in school and I wasn't the smartest kid, but I know it was test time coming up. Uh, Eat time to talk right now. Right. I need to pay attention because I ain't paid attention all the whole time. At least let me pay attention now. Yeah. Come on, I ain't read my Bible all week. I ain't prayed all week. I ain't been to Bible study. I ain't been to church. Let me pay attention now. I don't need no distractions right now. Thank you, God. This is not the time for distractions. Mm. And so my job now is to remove those crabgrass. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want it to spring up and then now I'm fighting with crabgrass all year long. The word comes to show you the crabgrass in your life. Yeah. It comes to expose that which is in darkness. Come on. Jesus said, I couldn't do much work in this place because of that lack of faith, unbelief. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. So when we have faith in God's word, we pay attention. Yes, we do. I know this ain't going to be no jumping shout. That's all Because I'm talking to you. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Yeah, you ever had that one when someone, you in the crowd for the first time talking to you? <laughs> yes. And all of a sudden, now you're in defense because they're talking to you? Hello? Hallelujah. But if it's something good, talk to me. Come, there, there you go. Come on. Bring it on. Come on. Come on. Don't hold back now. Give me what the Lord got. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want, I want it all, Pastor. I want it all, preacher. Come on, brother. Tell me everything God wants to tell me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But let it shift. Ooh. Tell somebody, let it shift. Let it shift. Let it stop correcting you. Oh, oh, oh. All right, that's enough. I don't hurry. I got you. We could. <laughs> yeah, right there. Oh, we could. We could now. We could now. Okay, I got you. You ain't got to keep on repeating yourself. <laughs> yeah, you ain't good. Yeah, I can't. I'm slow. You got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Amen. That's good. But when the blessing by you don't want it, the level stop. Keep on coming up. Yeah. You say, come on. Yeah, Lord. House, yes, Lord. Money in the bank. Money in the bank. Yes, Lord. But then he tell you to change how you spend it. Yeah. Now, Lord, you don't need to go there. <laughs> you need to leave that conversation alone. I done done my part. I done tied. I gave you some offering. I'm good now. But God wants all of you. Come on, he's instructing us in pearls of wisdom to build us up. See, y'all have to realize that when pearls are going forth, they don't go forth lightly. Mm -hmm. You just don't give pearls to people. They're not marbles. Hello. No. You know, they look like marbles, though, right? No. Huh? No. But they're not, right? You don't go out there and get some expensive pearls and start playing marbles with it. No. See, I grew up with marbles was a thing. 
Like, like y'all got a video game? Not Marvel was a thing. We drew a circle in the ground, you put in your share of marbles, and I put in my share of marbles, and you take your shooter, that what it was called, you take a shooter, and you use your thumb, and you will shoot. If you knock out the marbles inside it, they became yours. That's how to play a game of marbles. I went up in North Carolina and went and played some marbles. Oh, Lord, I fell in love with that game. But I ain't had no marbles. So I took my cousin marbles and went over there and played somebody who was better than me. Uh-oh. Y'all know who the outcome is, isn't it? Hallelujah. And I lost somebody else's marbles. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, to me, it wasn't no work. It wasn't of no value to me. I just was interested in the game. Y'all don't want to talk. See, some people just interested in the church. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And not the pearls of wisdom. Come on, wow. Come on. Oh, wow. Well, as I was walking around this morning, I, I came across the garden that the kids are supposed to play. <laughs> that I ain't up for that. But I ain't throwing no shade at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and as I was planting, I planted um, some tomatoes. I planted some bell peppers. And I planted some hot peppers. And I planted, I planted some banana peppers. Because last year, I was picking up all the banana peppers. So I said, we need to need some more banana peppers. Hallelujah. Every time I turn around, I hear, oh. <laughs> what you eating? I mean, banana peppers. <laughs> But there were so many out there that was just producing. So I created some uh, some space this time so we can get the fullness of it. And as I was going out and looking over the garden, I was like, oh, you know what? I see some fruit coming from the plant. I started seeing banana peppers. And I, we got banana peppers, hot peppers, bell peppers, and tomatoes, but only one was producing. What are you saying, Pastor? The Lord showed me that people grow differently. Okay. Even though all of them peppers uh -huh. <laughs> or all of them are around it, yet still they're growing differently. Give the, 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 the bell peppers a little bit more time. Hallelujah. And sometimes we judge it because we see, hallelujah, that the plants are about the same height, but they ain't producing the same. Just because we look the part don't mean we're producing the part. But give somebody some time. Tell somebody to give them some time. Yeah. Some people need more time than you. Yeah. You don't even know how long that person been in the ground. Yeah. Been in the situation. Because yes. sometimes you come and show up, you judge them based on your time. Yeah. And not on God's time. Amen. Yes. Tell somebody to give them some time. Give them some time. God's working on it. They just grow differently. But they will grow. And when they produce, you're like, oh, wow. Hallelujah. You never look back at the whole process. You never really think about the time when you didn't see any. What I have learned, thanks to Evangelist Green, is that every time a flower comes forth, that's actually a fruit. Oh, y'all know that? Well, now y'all do. Because I'm talking to you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God will open up your fruit. It'll open up your flower so you can produce when you receive it. And then later on, you don't even see the flower. It drops off. It falls apart. And then the fruit that's coming forth out of that plant shows up. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times people get all excited about the budding of the flower. That's good. But I also want the fruit. I ain't came here to look at flowers. Come on, somebody should shout right there. I tell somebody, I ain't came here to look at flowers. I came here for some bell peppers. I came here for some banana peppers. I came here for some hot peppers. Yes. That's what I want. I want the fruit of the plant. It's good. I understand it going through stages. But when it produces, that's what I want. So God just don't want us to look flowery. He wants us to be producing. Because it reflects back to the time when Jesus came to that fig tree and he was hungry. 
and it had all the leaves on it. Look like church, act like church, talk like church, but was no word in it. No fruit. What did he do to the tree? He cursed it. Hallelujah. Now one time he said, all right, all right. Somebody said, please intercede. <laughs> Can you dig around a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Give it a little time to be fertilized and put some dough on it and, and see what it produced. Well, the dough is running out. I said, the dumb is running out. Yeah. How many times must God fertilize around your plants yeah. before you produce? Yeah. If it ain't the fertilizer, it got to be you. Okay. 10, 10, 10. That's a fertilizer. I didn't know that until Pastor Street sent me down here to the evening scene. <laughs> See, you'll learn a lot when someone talking to you. Uh, I'm going to preach to myself. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. If you don't know something, if someone is talking to you, they're educating you. Yeah. Yeah. They're showing you some wisdom. And if you apply, you'll produce. Right. I wanted the plants to grow. If I never talked to her, if she never talked to me, I would have never known about the fertilizer. Sometimes we think we know and we don't know. But we cut people off based on our attitude. Hello, are you enjoying the word today? Do you want to go to another level with us? Then join us every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. for Bible study. Also, follow us on Facebook for more great word. And while we have your attention, please take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube page. I promise that you won't regret it. Now, back to the word. Okay, as I was walking around this morning, the last thing I was walking around this morning, I usually walk around my house and, and I'll pick up trash. You know, pick my little thing. And I ain't picking up with my hand. God gave me wisdom. And someone gave me a little piece of thing that could hold a piece of the watch card. And so I'm walking around and I'm figuring because we have this world famous Kuda Fest. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Anybody know? Uh, Anybody visit that place? I went down there because, you know, we got the world famous turkey wings and the world famous sausage dogs and the world famous everything else, and all that. And you go down there based on whatever you like, right? Yeah, you know, some go down there just to see everybody, enjoy all that. But I went down there because I wanted something. And then as I was down there, I got what I wanted and I left. But I knew the festival was there. So when I was walking around this morning, I was like, man. That road on, on, on Water Street going to be a mess because people like to, if they throw hardy stuff out on this road, I know they're going to throw their stuff out on this road. Y'all know Hardy's is not very far. That'd be the time you left from Hardy's to get here. You know, that's your food and throw it out the window. Well, I went outside and I only picked up like a beer can, a, 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 a Corona bottle, and, and another piece of paper. But I'm complaining. About keeping the air clean. And the Lord say, if they ain't got in their heart to change, they're going to continue to live. Only until you have the conviction to change do you stop living. Come on, come on. And so, since you got that conviction, you do something about it. So I'm going around, Victoria, and I'm picking up stuff, picking up stuff, and I'm complaining about it. And then the Lord says, go downtown. So I go down to Memorial Street where the festival at, and I see a bunch of uh, uh, county uh, employees down there. And this is like before 7 o'clock in the morning. And guess what they're doing? Picking up trash. And guess what? They got more trash than me. And I'm here complaining about my trash, picking up my trash, and somebody else, it's their job to pick up trash. I was like, Lord. So why are you showing me that? Thank you, God. Then he took me back in my mind to the day prior when I'm walking down on Bluff Street on my bike. I ride my bike on Bluff Street and I saw this man walk beside the road picking up trash. This is the first time I've ever seen him done that. And I believe that because I'm feeling that because of what the Lord had me doing over here, maintaining this area, you don't know how you affect someone. When someone is talking to you and you take it, you can affect somebody else's life. 
And I believe because he saw me picking up trash. Hallelujah. He wanted to keep it in front of his place clean. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God. And so in all this, if you do your assignment, if you take care of your area, God will take care of the rest. Yeah. Yes. There's always going to be someone throwing trash. What do you mean, Pastor? There's always going to be some sin, no matter what it is. Someone, you will always be around sin, but you can always be the light to bring sin out. Amen. 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 Somebody got to be to pick up trash. Yes, sir. Someone got to do it without complaining. Hallelujah, Lord, why is it they're throwing it in my yard? Why are they throwing it in the church yard? Why can't they throw it across the street in the other people's yard? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, yo, we know how we feel. Why, that, why it always got to be me, Lord? Why well, I'm always the one that got to be doing what's right? Why well, I'm always got to be doing extra? Why, why, why? Y'all never had that me moment? Yeah. How many people have had that me moment? Oh, yeah. Why me? Why I'm the only one can catch this, get this, grasp this, understand this. Why me, Lord? Exactly. I equip you. And I dealt with you. I had a little pep talk with you. And you heard me. And now you got to operate in it. And when I, I didn't know worry about it. I'm talking to others. It just ain't listening. <laughs> Because the same one that threw it out the window, the Lord told him don't do it. Come on, you, we all done had a moment. Yes. See, I used to throw trash out the window. I did too. Anybody else? Y'all, y'all, this is not y'all going to jail. I did. <laughs> this is a past confession that you done threw some stuff out the window. And I used to make an excuse. Sometimes I'd be like, well, it's a biodegradable. I can throw it out the window. Come on, hallelujah. You know, you have an animal. I'm just helping out some animals, you know, or helping out the ants or whatever it is. And yeah. you just throw it out there. Yeah. But you, would you want to have an animal peeling in front of your house? No. Huh? No. And so the Lord dealt with me. He was like, because of all that stuff he was throwing out, he was just recuperating. <laughs> it's being reciprocated back to him. Because I live next door, in case y'all don't know. Uh-huh. Now that's for anybody on that, don't you come to my house? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, Pastor right over here. Don't come to my house on the downs. <laughs> Hallelujah. But 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 uh because of all this time I was passing here, and I used to tell my wife when we was heading to Creekwood to our apartment, I'd be like, man, I wouldn't want to live in the house. I said, you know why? Because there's a big ditch right beside. And I knew on many nights I was coming on half drunk, I threw bubbles out that window. <laughs> right into that ditch, trying to throw it in the ditch. Uh-huh. And I'll miss it quite a few times. You think I wouldn't stop and pick it up? No. But because I threw it out there, now someone's still throwing it out there. And see, I got to go back and pick up all the stuff that I threw out, even though somebody else is putting it down. Y'all don't want to talk right there. Hallelujah. God will make you do your work. Hallelujah. He'll make you do work that you have done over again. Okay. Don't think you escaping. I'm just recuperating. I'm just getting back on the things that I have done. See, what we want is a clean slate. When we messed up, we were like, you know, Lord, wipe out everything. Everything is going to be perfect now. No, you got consequences of your action. But if he's not talking to you, you're going to keep on doing it. And even if he's talking to you and you're not listening, you're going to keep on doing it. You ever had a conversation with someone in authority and they're talking to you? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> Inside your head, you're going, mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> but outside, you're doing this. Yes. Yes. And that's how we are. We can clap our hands, we can praise the Lord, we can shout hallelujah, but inside our heart, we say, uh huh. I ain't ready to do that yet. Am I the only one who started talking to? Hallelujah. When he was like, you know what? The word going forth. Hallelujah. I know I should have, but then I end up doing it anyhow. So he's talking to us. We just ain't listening. Open up your heart. Tell someone next to you, open up your heart. heart. And let the words of God fall upon you. 
And then once it falls upon it, I want you to, to graft it upon your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, anybody know how to stitch it in? Oh, so, oh, yeah. come on. You do that to keep things together, right? Yeah. So I want you to stitch this word to your heart. Come on. Hallelujah. That it doesn't depart from you. The Bible tells us to meditate upon his word. Hallelujah. Put it in the heart. That it won't depart from you. Once you engrave uh, it, engrave it into your heart, it ain't coming out. Amen. You have to take your heart out to go with it. All right. I told the Lord, I don't want to keep picking up trash. So I got to quit making a mess. All right. Somebody will catch this later. If you keep throwing stuff out there, when you get delivered, you won't end up picking this stuff up. If you want less work when you get delivered, quit making a mess now. All right. All right. Wow. It did say pearls of wisdom, right? And one thing I've learned is that people don't like wisdom. They rather really have a knowledge or form of it, but no power with it. Is that not the word? So you can have a form of godliness and not have the power thereof. The power will come from healing to what God is saying. When we heal to what God is saying, then He's talking not at us, but talking to us. Tell someone, I need a dialogue. I need a dialogue. A dialogue with God. Dialogue. Hallelujah. The monologues is afraid out. Hello. You already talking about monologue? That way you just have a conversation. Oh Lord, I need God, thank you. Lord, bless my children too. And all of us. And Lord, thank you for that. They never give God a chance to talk back to you. When he talks back to you, he bring correction on you. Yeah. How many people know they need correction? Yeah. There's some stuff you need correction in. Somebody got an attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, hallelujah. God can always deal with us in attitudes. Oh, yeah. Ain't nobody in here perfect in their attitude. Oh, yeah. right. Not one. I don't care how good you are. There's sometimes you slip based on the day, based on the moment, based on the situation. It could be seven in his booth that's in that window over there. Yeah. I love that woman over there. Yeah. But who can get on his nerves? Yeah. And then he'll catch an attitude. Uh -huh. I never catch an attitude with her. Uh -huh. Until yeah. that moment. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so God should be in to deal with us in that moment. Yeah. There's some things God needs to be dealing with us on. Yeah. We always look at how God will deal with other folks. Well, how about God dealing with you? That's why I don't think you will ever come to church and God not deal with you. I don't know about y'all. I preach. Well, God preached to me. I got to be the first partake of the group, so when he's talking, I'm listening too. I, I, I'm not like some of y'all. I ain't I for the gym. I'm not for I am for the gym. I'm not um, photographic. Somebody caught that who knows some words. <laughs> photogenic is picture taking. That means you ever heard someone say, oh, you're very photogenic? Yes. I say I'm photogenic, not photographic. Photographic means you got a photographic memory. Uh, you can capture things and take a picture of it and you remember it. Hallelujah. How many of y'all photographing here? Yeah, not too many. A couple of us here, but not all of us. Hallelujah. That's pretty good if y'all. But for me, I need to be told sometime more than once. I need to hear the story again. And I need to write it down. Come on. I don't know. Some of y'all, y'all got that. Y'all got to have it. Because I never see y'all taking no notes. Oh, I'm getting the pastor. I'm going to get my spirit. It's in here. Well, I heard one preacher say, 
Lord, he grasped this on my heart. That's what we need to say sometimes. Lord, he grasped it on my heart. I don't want whatever you're speaking to me just to go over my head. I don't want what you're saying to me just to be out of words to me. He ain't out of the you. When God speaks, y'all got to hear that. When God speaks, he speaks with authority. Nothing he says is out of. God don't waste words. No, he doesn't. You know, somebody just be blabbering. You talk too much. You never shut up. Oh, that's a song. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. But you know, that's just a person we probably just talking. Y'all, y'all know y'all got some friends like that. If y'all don't, you must be <laughs> Just always be talking. But God don't waste words. No, when he speaks, his words have authority with it. Yeah. All his words is heavy. Yeah. They are grounded. They are rooted. Yeah. They have meaning behind it. Thank you. When he told his friend, what is his close friend, get me behind me, Satan. He just said, you know, like, be quiet, girl. That meant something. That say something heavy to him. Because, you know, Jesus didn't waste no words. What he spoke is what he spoke, and he meant what he spoke. So when God is talking to us, he's talking to you for a reason. Don't be out of minded in church. If not, we become religious. Going through a form of God, but you deny the very power. The power comes from yielding to God's word. Amen? So if you don't want trash, quit making a mess. Now, some may blow in your air. Hallelujah, but it can blow out. I left a piece of paper on the ground one. It blew from down the road. And I didn't pick it up. When I came back, it was gone. A couple days later, I found the thing. It was just on the back side of the church. <laughs> See, something can blow in and can blow right on out. But if it was one that was out planted, because I made a mess, it would have stayed right there for you. Some stuff you got to deal with and some stuff you got to let go through. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. Y'all, y'all ain't got to worry about she stays for. <laughs> Hallelujah. She ain't hurt my brain. It's okay. If she was, it's okay. Because you've been hurting him out of love. Oh, no. Y'all get all up in your feet. Don't know my child like that. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> I gave my, I gave my, all, everybody I knew permission to whip my children. Come up in church. Oh, you want to go have food in church. And after they whoop you, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. They got home, they got another one. I guarantee you, my kids don't act up in church. Hello? But it's okay. You wait now. Ain't God good? Yeah. As a matter of fact, grandson, you was an example. <laughs> Because you was an example, it woke other kids up. That's right. Pay attention now. I don't want missionary to come around me. Have a conversation. Praise God. But that's what God will use. Think about it. He used us like that. And we complain it because he used us as an example. He got to start with somebody. Why not me? Can I get some why not bees in here? Somebody who don't mind God using them. Somebody who don't care how God used them, when he used them, how he used them. As long as he using me. I just want him to talk to me. See, when he's talking to you, you're ignoring him. You ever been ignored? Let me say this to my coach. You ever been ignored? I mean, you, to them, whoever was ignoring you didn't feel like he was important enough to talk to. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all been trying to flirt with some guy or girl, and they, they say that your conversation wasn't valuable, right? And that you was not important to them. But if they was interested in you, they did not ignore you. Talk to me, baby. Hello? Why wouldn't we 
we want God to talk to us. Yeah. It's not always chastisement. Yeah. He talks to encourage us. Yeah. He talks to build us up. Yeah. He talks to edify us. Yeah. Not just admonish us alone. Mm-hmm. What kind of God would we serve is he always beating us? Mm-hmm. He would be abusive. Hello? When I walk my kids, it was time I cried. I don't know if I told y'all, but I did. I beat y'all so hard. That was the last time. My wife would tell you, trying to scream. I don't know what that boy done. But whatever he done, he had me to beat him. I went in there and I woke him. And he would cry. And I came back and I was go tell him why he did it. I mean, no, I, Struck me, I was like, son, I say, it's not that I don't love you, but I had to correct you and let you know, and this helps you. <laughs> this stays with you a little longer. And then I said, so how do you feel? I said, are you mad at me? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, because you're my best buddy. <laughs> <laughs> See how y'all hard right there? That thing broke me up too. I'm going to Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus, Jesus. 
team, a team, a team. I guarantee you that thought was gone. If you keep on believing, you keep on calling on him. Hallelujah. Not only will he talk to you, but he'll talk to you in Hallelujah. 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 Rebuke in the name of Jesus. Go. Hallelujah. Cast out. My God loves us so much that even when we was in our sin, he died for us. No greater love than this than a man laid down his life for his friend. We say we love. But our love is a lot of times conditional. 